This lesson will cover the calculus section in the core math syllabus. Now, when we deal with calculus in core maths, we will mainly be dealing with the derivatives of a graph. Now, a derivative is simply the gradient at a point on a graph. We can use that gradient to find the gradient of a tangent at a point. And when we refer to the normal to a curve, it is simply the gradient at that point times the gradient of the normal equaling negative one as your normal is perpendicular to your curve at that point. Now, in many cases, they will ask you to find your der derivative using first principles, which is done as follows. And this is probably the most complicated way of finding your derivative, but in many cases, they will ask you to do it specifically by first principles, in which case you cannot use the quick rule. So you will be given this formula on your formula sheet. F dash X being your derivative equals the limit as H tends to zero of F of X plus H minus F of X over H. Um, this is simply your average gradient, which is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, as we know where f of x plus h minus f of x over h is your gradient. Now, you must remember when solving by first principles to include this limit as h tends to zero notation with every line of working. They have become very strict with your notation and how you lay out your working. So just remember to include this notation with every line. So if we look at an example such as this one, it says find f dash x being your derivative of f of x equals 1 over x minus 2 from first principles. So we simply use our formula that we are given on the formula sheet. f dash x equals the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h. So we take our function and wherever we see x, we simply put x plus h. So it's 1 over x plus h minus 2 minus f of x, so we simply minus our function, which is 1 over x minus 2. And all of that is divided by h, as we can see in the formula. As I've written here, just remember to include your notation with every line of working. As you can see, with every line of working, we include the limit as h tends to 0 until we get to this point, which I'll explain when we get there. Then we need to simplify our algebraic fraction. So we get a common denominator out of these two denominators and we multiply through to get one fraction on top divided by H. Then we simply simplify and we get a negative H on the top over our denominator times one over H because we know if we are dividing by an H, we can simply tip in times timesing by one over H. Now in order before we ever sub zero for our h, we need to ensure that we have cancelled our h in our denominator with an h in our numerator fraction. So here, as we can see, our negative h will cancel with our h and it falls away, which we've done here. And our next step is then to sub zero in for our h. As we said, it's a limit as h tends to zero. So once we've made this cancellation, we simply sub zero in for h so that we can work out what the limit is as h tends to zero. Once we've done that, we get negative one over x minus two, x minus two, and we simply multiply that out to get negative one over x squared minus four x plus four, which is our derivative of our function f of x equals one over x minus two. From this point, once you have subbed zero in for h, you can then drop your limit as h tends to naught notation as we've calculated the limit and now we are simply simplifying. Here's a more complicated example, solving for a derivative by first principles. It says find f dash x if f of x equals one over root x plus one. So we use our formula, simply f dash x equals the limit is h tends to zero of one over x plus h plus one, the root of that, minus one over root x plus one all over h. Remember, for your first 
for your first part of your formula, you simply put x plus h where you see x. And for the second part, it is simply your function. Remember, it's all divided by h. Now, in an example like this, where you have roots and you're not going to get a cancellation of your h, you need to multiply by the conjugate. The conjugate is simply the conjugate of your numerator, where you've changing your sign in order to get a cancellation of your roots. Now, you must remember that the sign of your conjugate is opposite to that of your numerator. And it's root x plus one plus root x plus h plus one over root x plus one plus root x plus h plus one. So this fraction is in essence one, which does not change the value of your fraction over here. Once you've multiplied this through, you will get this. And now we can see that we get a cancellation. We get x minus x, one minus one, and we get an h, which we can cancel with our denominator in this fraction. We then cancel through as we did in the last example. And in our next step, we sub zero for where we have our h's. Then we have negative one over our denominator, which we simplify to x plus one to root x plus one. And that is now the derivative for our function f of x equals one over root x plus one. Importantly, you must remember that before you sub zero for h, you must get a cancellation of your h in your numerator with your h in your denominator. Now, when you are not asked to use your quick rule, you can simply, sorry, when you're not asked to use your first principles, you can simply use your quick rule. Your quick rule simply states, if f of x equals a x to the n, then f dash x being your derivative equals n a x n minus one. That simply means that if you have an example such as this, to get the derivative, you simply bring your n down. So n a times x, and you decrease your exponent by one being n minus one. Some things to look out for. If you're given one over an exponent, a variable with an exponent, you should change this to your variable with a negative exponent to make it easier. In this case, we become negative two x to the negative three as you decrease your negative two by one. In a case like this, you should get rid of the roots and simply make it an exponent where it is one over two and multiply that into your three and you get x to three over two. Taking the derivative, you would get three over two x to the three over two minus one. In a case like this, for core maths, you are not required to use the chain rule, which forms part of the AP math syllabus. So in a case like this, you should multi simply multiply this out and get single terms and then apply quick, your quick rule to each term. In a case like this, where you have a numerator and a denominator, you must factorize and cancel. So you factorize your top to x plus three and x minus one, sorry, x minus three and x plus one uh, over x minus three, and you'll get a cancellation of your x minus three and your x minus three in the denominator, and you'll be left with x plus one, which is easily derived to one. When we look at points on a graph with our derivatives, a stationary point, you will often, often be asked to find the stationary point on a graph. You simply do this by finding the derivative of the function and then making your derivative equal to zero and you will come out with x coordinates where your stationary points lie. So your stationary points are simply where your f dash x equals zero. Now, they may ask you more complicated point, uh, questions, such as is the turning point a maximum or a minimum, or find the point of inflection. When doing this, you'll use your second derivative, which is simply the derivative of your first derivative. You use the same rules as we've shown above, and you derive your first derivative. 
if you have a local maximum at a turning point, your f double dash x being your second derivative will be less than zero. If you have a local minimum at your turning point, your f double dash x being your second derivative will be greater than zero. And if you have a point of inflection, which would look something like this on your graph, your f double dash x equals zero. Now, they may ask you to solve for points where you have a local minimum or a local maximum. And in that case, you would simply find your second derivative, make that equal to, sorry, where you ask to solve for a point of inflection, you would simply find your f double dash x being your second derivative, make that equal to zero. And the values that you come out with will be points where you have a point of inflection on your graph.